Hey guys, what's up? In the past month and a half, I've been really excited to do a feature on one of the newer investment products we have in the country, and it's the GCash G-Invest Technology Feeder Fund. With this investment fund, we Filipinos can now invest in companies such as Apple, Visa, and Microsoft, to name a few, similar to the US equity fund that's being offered by banks that I shared with you several videos ago. This fund is similar as it also invests in US equity funds except that this one is specific to technology companies while the previous fund that I mentioned to you would be a US equity fund tracking the S&P 500 meaning that it's not a sector based fund so this fund is similar but it's not the same. What's most exciting about this fund is that you can get in on the said funds for as little as 1000 pesos. That's right 1000 pesos. For a security bank in BDO, the minimum is actually a thousand US dollars, so roughly 50,000 pesos. So that's 1,000 pesos versus 50,000 pesos. By far, the buy in for this product is much, much lower. So it's been a month and a half, roughly about six weeks. So I'm here to tell you about how my fund is doing, right? And <laughs> unfortunately, I still haven't been able to invest in the fund. I've run into unexpected roadblocks and complications that I just didn't foresee. I've actually done some research about this product being offered by Gcash, how it works, what's behind it, and is there a way that we can invest in the fund without having to course through Gcash? Let's find out. Like I said, I ran into so many roadblocks trying to invest in this Gcash Invest product. For the first two weeks, I couldn't complete my account verification. For some reason, the one-time password that was being generated and sent to my email was just not coming in. And for about two weeks, quite frustratingly, I had a lot of exchanges with Gcash customer support and the one-time password eventually did come in. The concern was never resolved on the customer support level, after which I was raring to go, the markets were down, and I was gonna invest because my Gcash was now verified. Is this right? Nope, not again. As I tried and tried to click on the G-Invest icon within the Gcash app, I kept getting an error message saying, these products are not yet available for payroll accounts. So I thought it was just a bug. I tried to update the app, tried it in different times of the day, and eventually, I had to resort again to customer support to ask what was going on. And the reply to me of customer support was that it was an open to payroll accounts, and I had to have this resolved again because I said, I haven't been part of any payroll in almost three years now. Gladly, this one didn't take two weeks, took about five days. Once that was resolved, I was able to get into G-Invest finally, five different funds that Gcash is offering now. So when I clicked on the fund that I wanted to invest in, it was unfortunately unavailable. Out of the five, only one of the investment funds were available. So it's the money market fund that doesn't really yield great returns. So checking through the different options, there were actually no options. So again, resorting to customer support, customer support told me that those funds are not yet available, which was kind of a real disappointment. I checked the press releases as early as February 3. Gcash already had a press release that the fund was going to be available. So I guess that was a plan to launch rather than an actual launch. So I did my research further trying to understand the product better. And what I found out was that there are actually two companies enabling Gcash to be able to offer this product. The first one is ATRAM, that's ATR Asset Management Group, and Seedbox Philippines. So I looked at ATRAM's website, and under Technology Feeder Fund, as far as historical performance is concerned, ATRAM can only give you the one-year return. So they also have a column for three years and five years, but since they're new, they can only give you the returns for one year. Maybe this is a bit concerning since you would be investing in something that's really new with nothing to go by historically versus the banks which had years and years of historical data. But I was actually reassured once I dug down a little further, I found out that this fund was tracking the MSCI World IT Fund. This fund has a five-year annualized return of about 27% and for 10 years, it's about 18%. So if we're going by the MSCI tracking, at least we know that there is some historical performance that we can go by. As I tried to invest by the Atram website, I was then led to the Seedbox Philippines website. So Atram seems like the guys who are actually running the funds and Seedbox Philippines seems to be the technology provider. What was interesting to note with the Atram and the Seedbox website was that 
it actually had very helpful information listed the cutoff periods for when you wanted to place your orders so it also included the settlement period these are very helpful in case you wanted to time the market and if you needed your funds you would know by what time you need to place in your redemption and when you will get it so the money market fund on the gcash app actually doesn't have these information so i found the atram and seedbox websites very helpful i started the whole registration process with seedbox philippines the kyc documents and forms submitted i got an email from seedbox for me to schedule the call via skype or messenger whatever you prefer so they gave me a calendar and the earliest availability is april 26 <laughs> So, of course, I took on the earliest slot for April 26. So now I'm waiting to invest in Seedbox or Gcash, whichever comes first. So I'm a little disappointed that I didn't get to invest now. I guess I just have to wait. So yes, I continue to be excited about the fund. Again, 1,000 pesos is really a far comparison. Honestly, my investment appetite was a bit tempered. I mean, the process has so far been not as easy as I thought it would have been. Since this is a fund run by fairly new players, coming into it with an understanding that maybe it's best that I don't put too much money versus I would with the banks. I mean, not just because of the minimums, but because of also the risk exposure and this new technology. And just to close it out, I would actually invest more via Seedbox. I mean, the customer support was fairly easy versus Gcash wherein I really felt like in those two weeks it was really frustrating and ended up being more difficult than it had to be. When thinking about you know, parting with your hard-earned funds for an investment and when I was going through that, I was thinking to myself, I couldn't really put too much money of the level of support or the understanding that I was getting I was competent at best. I, I think when it comes to money and investments, I feel like the customer support should always be more knowledgeable, really looking to resolve things as soon as possible. And honestly, for me, it brought up some old feelings. Um, Gcash and smart money, <laughs> pay Maya, <laughs> showing my age. Gcash and pay Maya have actually done us wonders, especially during this whole pandemic season. They've really been able to offer payment services for the unbanked, but it did bring up some old concerns, old hesitations as far back as 10 years ago when I'd be talking to my friends. This is completely just our opinion. I've always had some hesitation in entrusting my money to telcos. I guess I have some hesitations. I mean, for me, with whom would I entrust my money? Would it be a bank or a telco? For me, it's always going to be a bank. For Gcash, Gnvest, yes, I'll put a little, try it out, maybe put a little bit more, but definitely it will never be in the same level of banks for me, at least at this point in time. I guess I'm a little old school. And the biggest thing for me was Naho Load, which the NTC looked to regulate. There are some questionable practices, maybe no longer there. We've all heard the stories about load just being eaten up. I think that's always been the biggest hesitation for me when it comes to entrusting more money with telcos. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. I hope I do get around to investing in Gcash G Invest soon. I hope that you guys do too. If you've experienced the same problems or if you've been successful, let me know in the comments because I'd like to know how you were able to do it. If you've liked this video, please don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks again for watching guys. Wishing you a fruitful investment and see you again next time.